funeral with that music. <laughs> the music, it's wonderful. It's a great band we have here. It's a three-piece band over in the corner, out there with the audience. Did you, you explain to your audience about your air conditioning system? I think that's delightful. That I don't know if we can get a shot of that or no. not, because it's right in front of the light. Uh, and it, uh, there's, they've got toilet paper on the toilet air conditioning paper. There's toilet paper on there, and I'm fascinated by it. I don't, I don't know why. It's <laughs> Small things entertain you. It's nice to find new uses for things that you thought were very mundane before, you know. <laughs> sure you that's are. The <laughs> wave in the wind up there. We can't get a shot of that. Now, you had in, in Entity a big role. Is it the biggest role you've had so far? Yeah, in a film it is, yeah. It is. Uh. I play a psychiatrist that's trying to convince Barbara Hershey that uh, she is not being raped, but it's all happening in her own mind. Unfortunately for my character, five minutes into the film, the entire audience <laughs> sees this thing rape. So, uh, so they, they know I'm kind of wrong right from the beginning. That was based on a true story, yeah, supposedly. Yeah, it was. Yeah. The, uh, the lady that they say that it actually happened to, the psychiatrist said what, did she was lying or something? No, no, no. Yeah. What happened is they, they, they followed it, uh, they followed the story. They're actually, the real story is kind of interesting. They didn't get this far in the film. The, the character I played, the psychiatrist, became so obsessive in his concern for this woman that he left his practice and went down to Texas to, a, to an institution where she was committed and he worked in that hospital to be near her. To just a just to, just to continue the story. following with her and all like that. So you I, I never met the real person, uh, so all my information comes from the fellow who wrote the book, Frank DiFolito. But you followed the story all the way through, as opposed to just working in the film, and that was it. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, in fact, the parapsychology department was disbanded at UCLA after this case. Was it really? Was, yeah, which was kind of interesting, because it seems to have raised a lot of political issues yeah. for the university. She was here with us, Barbara Hershey, and brought the clip where she's sitting in the living room and the window blows in from the, from the back, knocks yeah. her on the floor. Kind of frightening. Yeah, and she yeah. said when they did that, it was like the directors and all the people on the crew wouldn't say when they were going to push the button and make that happen. I guess to get the realism. Well, isn't that a lot of fun? <laughs> no, I wouldn't want <laughs> to do that. Isn't that great? I wouldn't want to do that. No. You said you've done a lot of television. Yeah. Different shows. Are there any shows? Uh, I've seen shows like The Partridge Family where where you'll see Farrah Fawcett coming out of a grocery store in just a quick bit like that. Have you done those? Yeah, I did, actually. I, I did a show called uh, The Dumplings, which with uh, Jimmy Coco and Geraldine Brooks, in which I just walked in and had one or two lines because I wanted to work for Norman Lear and get to meet them and this and that. But that show is not on the air anymore, so I don't, I don't know. That was a I series? Did, I, wait, when I first got out here, I did Macmillan and Wife. I did uh, the Rockford Files, and I had kind of real small roles in them. And did you always have the beard? No, no, not when I was born. No, I <laughs> no, I, I grew the beard. I, I grew, grew the, the beard, beard about uh, three or four years ago. I was doing a play uh, in the Boom Boom Room out here on the coast, and I grew the beard for that, and I have kept it since then, and it's it's worked kind of well for me. I like the way I look in a beard. My wife likes the beard. But if the part came along, they said, you don't need the beard, you'd shave the beard off. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, because that's one nice thing about having a beard, you can take it off. A lot of people can't put one on. I know we had... Hmm. Uh, I, I, I can't do that's that. I can't never do thought that. of that. I could never right. grow a beard. You arrived in Hollywood 30 years old. 29. 29 years old. Yeah. Which is kind of a late start. Uh, out of here. Did you work in New York? Well, as I had an a life before I came to Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. But I, not know, as an actor or as an actor? Yeah. I, I was acting in New York for about four years before then. I, uh, I didn't get into acting until I was about 25 years old. Which is still kind of late. Was that after the Chinese? Experience? Yeah, yeah. I was in, as I said, I was in graduate school in Taiwan and uh, I was going to get a doctorate in Chinese history and then work for the government. And I, for, for some pretty complicated and tedious reasons, I decided not to follow that. And I came back and became an actor when I was about 24, 25 years old. It's quite a turnaround, though. Did yeah. You do, did you do theater in school? No, I just, I, my last year of college at the University of Buffalo, I produced and directed a play because I needed to make some money for my tuition. And in that play at the University of Buffalo was uh, an actor who has now since become a director, Robbie Lieberman, who directed Table for Five, was an actor who has been a good friend of mine and remained a good friend, Peter Riegert, who is in a picture now, Local Hero. And uh, we had a whole group well, of people that were not... He was two weeks ago. Was he? Yeah. Well, ago. there was a whole group of people, and none of us were actors at the time or directors or anything. We were all in different majors. And then here you are today. Isn't, star that, of isn't, three isn't films. that 
fascinating that history? I mean, really, because there are so many people out here that are working down at, uh, like we had somebody here yesterday said they worked down at Bob's Big Boy for years before they got a break. Well, wait, I, I, I had a job once. Uh, I had as a an job ice cream. once? I had, I mean? Well, I don't consider acting. <laughs> no. a, I mean, I get so much time off to spend with my family and all like that. It's kind of very nice and, and luck. You know, a lot of people talk about how hard actors work, and they do when you have those weird hours, you 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 at night, but there are so many months when you have off, either voluntarily or not. Uh, so you get to spend a lot of time. It's a very lovely job in a way, but I had a real job once of, uh, I was an ice cream vendor, and this happened long ago. I was working in an ice cream store, and uh, my girlfriend came in, and um, I gave her a lot of ice cream that I didn't charge her for. I really filled up containers and all, and I was caught. Uh huh. And I was humiliated. Were you fired? Oh yeah, that was part of the humiliation. Yeah. <laughs> Public humiliation. <laughs> Absolutely, it was. Take why did I? Why did I bring that up? Why do I want was you that or back anyone in New else York? to know that? Yeah, it was back in New York. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't really happen. That was just a joke. <laughs> no, it really happened. <laughs> it really happened. It really happened. Oh, God. You have just finished another film, the, the Karen Silkwood story. Yes. Silkwood. Yeah, Silkwood. Uh, with uh, Meryl Streep, Mike Nichols directed Shares, and Kurt Russell. It's a wonderful cast. Well, last time we talked to somebody who was in that film, she said, we're not allowed to talk about it. Are you allowed to talk about it yet? Well, I didn't, I didn't know that. I, I, well, I shouldn't have told I, I'm you. I'm sorry, I, I just can't say anything about that picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll talk about it. I, I know very little about it. <laughs> I've been kept in the dark, actually. I, I know that Meryl Streep is in it, and Mike Nichols <laughs> You know the other people it, and, that are in it. And... Uh, what part did you play? I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to divulge. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I played it's a, finished. I played a union organizer who actually was instrumental in, in, in her actual story of getting her involved a little over her head uh, with the national organization, and I kind of wanted, I, I provided some sort of uh, impetus for her to get some information that turned out to be uh, pretty important information. In fact, she was going to be my character and the reporter from the New York Times the night she died. Cher, as you said, was in the film. Mm -hmm. now, who plays who plays Karen Silkwood? Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep Cher plays her. A, a very good friend and roommate. And Kurt Russell plays uh, uh, Karen Silkwood's lover. Did you have a lot of uh, a lot of scenes with Cher? No, no. I just worked with uh, with with Meryl. That's that's somebody to work with, I yeah. imagine, because yeah. she is real good. Yeah. Yeah. She impress you? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's kind of interesting the uh, this kind of deification of of actors. Uh, I think she's the finest actress I've ever worked with, but it, you, you can't afford to get impressed by somebody because then it will be impossible to work with them. That's a good yeah. I never thought you know, of that. You know, so uh, even if I were, I made it my business to treat it as a colleague, which which we were, and I. Hmm. She can take on what I get a charge out of seeing her. She takes on all these different characters and accents and personalities. And when she was in The Deer Hunter, mm -hmm. uh, I grew up around girls like her. So she was so realistic. And then Sophie's Choice, she does that. It's just amazing how she can go from one to the other. Now, the Karen Silkwood story, the, the case, uh, the true story, is there a way you could tell us about it? Just 15, 20 seconds of the story, the true story of Karen Silkwood? Well, from, from what I understand, uh, there was some boy. I don't know how to make this concise. Th at the Kermagee Institute uh, facility, there was some problem with the uh, health and safety conditions there, and Karen Silkwood got involved with union activities that eventually spread to the national organization, and uh, then she died in an accident. And there's a lot of controversy about how she died. Uh, that's kind of very skeletal, but. Um, but that basically is, tells what what the story is about. Yeah. And when they release an FS, it's not a TV film, is it? No, no, no. Yeah. That's a, that's a feature. I don't know. I'm not privy to those decisions. So what are you doing right now? Is this one of the periods where you have a few months off? No, I'm actually doing a picture now with um, uh, Judd Hirsch, Martin Balsam, Pamela Reed, Michael Tuckler, and uh, Gene Sachs. It's it's called The Goodbye People. It's uh, based on a, a play by Herb Gardner. It's a lovely, lovely piece. So you, you said the, the, the acting job is fun for you because you get all this time off. Do you have any time off? Yeah, you know, it, it, because acting is not going to work 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, 50 weeks a year. But it seems like you just wrap up one project and go right into another one. Well, I can disabuse you of, of that in a moment. I finished Silkwood in, uh, in December, and other than the Hill Street Blues, uh, I haven't worked, and I'll be going to work again next week.
so and, and this is months. March, you yeah. know, so, so you've had so. three months, four months off. Yeah. Okay. Now you cleared it up. Mm, there you go. All right. Thank you, Rob. We're going to take a break. Hope you can stay with us. Valerie Kaprisky from the new film Breathless when we come back.